om ze. We're going to send around the circle. Um, around one year ago, we got in contact with Gina Provo Cloud. She's a Dutch woman who is currently living in Indonesia. She invited us to come to Jakarta for a project. The thought of working in the tropics sounded like a great opportunity. Little did we know. Apparently, Jakarta is one of the most populated cities in the world. They have to cope with big problems like pollution and poverty. And Gina explained to us that she had a plan, which involved three elements. One, the street children of Jakarta, of which there are more than 10,000. Two, the enormous amount of waste material that is produced by the people of the city. And three, the Indonesian culture that has a rich history of handicrafts. These three elements uh, are part of the project called Fresh. Gina invited us, or she asked us actually, to design interior products made out of waste material, help set up a workshop, and train the street children to reproduce these products. So why did Gina invite us? Besides being designers with a hands-on approach, we also give seminars to design students around the world. Uh, at these seminars, we always ask our students to make a quick drawing of what their experience was and what they thought of us. Apparently, they think we're pretty strict. And they do tell us that they think they have to work really, really hard. So with this in mind, we became a little worried, because if this is what well-educated design students think of us, how would street children react? Will we be able to motivate them, or are they sniffing glue all day? You don't know. So more questions came to mind. Uh, are all the parties involved willing to work with us and make this project to a great success? Are we perhaps creating a sweatshop? Or uh, can we find the right waste material? So with this in mind, we went to Jakarta for a first time visit. Uh, besides analyzing the waste material, we also especially wanted to meet the street children to see if they were interested to work with us on this project. This is Bantakabang. Is it working? Okay. <laughs> this is Bantakabang, Jakarta's largest waste dump. Each day, every, or every day, 800 trucks of waste are dumped here. So as you can imagine, this area is huge. It's the size of a small city. And because of the hot and humid climate, it also smells like hell. Everywhere on these mountains, you can see people working. Grown-ups, but also small children. They are earning a bit of money by collecting pieces of plastic from the waste. And if you look right next to these mountains, you can find some kind of villages, as you can see down here. This is where the people actually live. To us, this was quite shocking to see, especially when you realize that these people are born here, but also die here. This is their world. A little brighter experience was our visit to KDM. KDM is a shelter for street children where they can find a place to sleep, but also receive education and, of course, lots of love. We were impressed by their organization and how well they are doing. But there's still one problem. When the youngsters reach the age of 19, they have to leave the shelter. So if they didn't learn a skill, there's a big chance they end up on the street again. This is where the Fresh project comes in. By teaching these students, or these youngsters, uh, some skills, and also offer them to work in uh, a structured environment, they have a better chance. Um, <laughs> uh, they have a better chance of a better future. It was great to hear that KDM uh, was very excited to join the Fresh project uh, because they have lots of uh, youngsters, but also they have a space available where we could set up the workshop. So
So, to get an idea of what we were facing in January, we organized a one-day seminar where we asked the children to each create one lamp. As you can see, there's just one lamp. The beginning went perfect. They started out by creating paper structures and in no time they covered the floor immediately. So it was really nice to see. When it was time to hand out the materials like light bulbs, blocks, uh, those kind of things, uh, it all went wrong. Uh, the children already started assembling uh, without us uh, be, being able to explain anything. And it also appeared that the material was of very, very poor quality. So I think within a few seconds, a little kid came up to me running with a burnt piece of electricity cable in his hand. And he said, Miss Karen, it said poof. So we're like, oh my God, we panicked. So at that moment, we decided to stop everything, collect the material, and uh, yeah, before the, chan the children had the chance to eliminate themselves. So uh, we sat down for a few minutes, uh, still not sure what to do. And at that point, when we came back, we were very surprised. The children did know what to do. They had decided together to create one huge lamp. So the older kids had, uh, had collected metal wire, the younger kids had collected plastic straps, and together they created a huge sphere. Uh, the most amazing thing we saw was th their organic way of working together. Probably it has to do with the time that they were, uh, they had to live on the streets and they have to be very solution oriented. On the streets, failure really is not an option. So the things we learned that day was actually next time probably we needed to hold them back instead of having to encourage them. So back here uh, at home in Eindhoven, uh, we used most of our spare time to work on the project. Uh, we experimented with all the materials that we took from Jakarta. For example, these bottle caps. We grinded them into our own kitchen blender and then in our own oven, we baked them into all kinds of colorful plastic pies. And the first product that we designed with this material uh, is a stool. These huge lamps we found in the harbor of Jakarta. They're about this big, and they are hanging on the sides of the boats. And each boat has around 50 of them, and they use them to catch octopus at night. When we talk to the fishermen, they explain to us that these lamps only last for about three months. After that, they just dump them in the ocean. So we explained the project to them and asked them if they could bring them back to shore for us. And they agreed. So uh, back home, we had one model. We found a way of cutting it open. And by adding a small metal frame, we constructed a flower vase. So together with these prototypes and a lot more ideas, uh, we went back to Jakarta in January, in January um, and we finally met the Fresh team. So please meet Irvan, Amir, Joshua, Dani, Warno and Zainal. Together with this team, we set up the workshop and we assembled all the new machines. Before we knew it, these uh, these youngsters were so enth enthusiastic that they started using and abusing the machines without knowing how to use them. But they were totally not bothered by their lack of knowledge. So it was time for some instructions. Sometimes these instructions took a lot longer than expected. For example, uh, Amir, in the middle, uh, it took me half an hour to explain to him how to open a can of paint. When I gave him the can, he just grabbed the screwdriver and started hacking at the can. The interesting thing is that we doubt if he ever had to open a can of paint before, but that he absolutely wasn't afraid to try. And if I didn't stop him, he would also have succeeded in getting to the paint. So after these instructions, uh, we thought it was a good idea to make them master of something. So for example, Irvan, we made him master of welding. And 
uh, Amir, we made him master of plastics. It was really great to see how proud it made them, and also how, uh, how serious they took their new title. A couple of them uh, were a bit nervous in the beginning whether they could live up to the expectations. But there was no need for concern at all. Irvan, he was off like a rocket. I think he finished welding 12 frames for the flower vases with, within one day, and he did a great job. Uh, Joshua and Zainal, they designed a new uh, product with a sandblasting cabinet. And Amir, he showed us that he had a real great eye for detail. So to make a long story short, ever since they started, they are unstoppable. We are very proud of them. Uh, we found that they are enormously eager to work and learn. They show a lot of responsibility and initiative. When it was time to, get, to say goodbye, we received another drawing, this one. Um, the most amazing thing we experienced, uh, we experienced is to see what huge potential three children have when they are offered just a bit of help. Not despite, but precisely because of their background, they will definitely choose to take their chances. Thank you. <laughs>